afternoon. Welcome to this is private practice for a rather blustery uh, and very starting to get very warm Tuesday afternoon. Oh my goodness, I am down to three working days <laughs> left in this week and I haven't spent any time working on that report, the report that I want done by the end of the week today. But uh, I have been doing the things that needed my attention, so I should feel good about that. But it's so quick to fall into all the shoulds the oughts, the can'ts, I should have done better, I should have known better. My time frames got blown out a bit today. I let some time creep creep into sessions with clients today. And now as I'm heading towards the last hour of my day, I'm kind of going, I could have used that time differently. But hey, it's gone. Time has gone. Linda Mottram, lovely to see you. Are you ready for your Big Bash game tonight? I assume you're going to be watching the Big Bash. It starts tonight. Yay! <laughs> All the cricket, all the time. All the cricket lovers are incredibly happy this time of year. I wanted to chat into something uh, unique. Well, not necessarily unique today, um, but the difference between personal and professional development and whether or not we can have one without the other. I think it's all well and good for us as health professionals to keep up our uh, credibility by doing continuing professional development or in the US you've got your CEUs here in Australia we call it CPD wherever you are in the world whatever acronyms you use please insert correct acronym here but it's about making sure that we keep on top of the changes the nuances emerging developments keeping our skills and knowledge up to date and I can assure you that it's also an incredibly important uh, to your own self-care as a professional making sure that you are learning how to use new knowledge new tools how to incorporate different ways of working into your clinical skills but for us to develop professionally I'm actually of the opinion that we need to develop personally and sometimes we need to take a break from the new CBT, ACT or the new didactic whatever or the new tactic that we use to treat a person and look at what it is that we actually need to develop as individuals, as leaders in our field, as leaders of our business. Even if you are doing this solo, you, have, you need to build your leadership capabilities. I've done so much reading over the years. I've been a bit of a personal self-development junkie for a long period of time. And you learn to weed out the rubbish and stick with the stuff that's actually truth and got some weight to it. And John Maxwell has written a lot of books. He's been around for a long time. And he talks about us having limits to our leadership and that the limitations to our leadership actually stops us from being able to grow. And leadership development is not the same as management development. Leadership development is about us. Management is about tools and others. And they're both really important skills and knowledge base to have to be able to grow your practice, grow your business, and grow yourself. So if Maxwell's talking about it and has been talking about it for years, then I think it is probably important that we, as business owners, entrepreneurs, clinicians, health professionals, take notice of that. And more recently, James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits, spoke into the fact that your business won't grow unless your systems support your business. Now, I, as a non-systematized person, well, I have systems, but they're not necessarily useful systems. They're not necessarily effective systems. In fact, I'm very good at creating new systems because I can't remember the system I had created. So it's not a useful system. So a part of my personal development, which will then become my professional development, is for me to become much more confident and much more settled in the way we systematize, automate, process, manage things that just need to be automated around here. But it's really interesting that that is such a development journey for me because I just want it done. But then I am the person that won't follow the process or the system when it is done. So there's a disconnect there. And that's got nothing to do with the system and everything to do with me, which is a personal development issue that needs to be addressed so that I can professionally develop and so that my business can develop. So my challenge for you is over this coming couple of weeks when we're all starting to think about next year and what we want from the new decade, is what do you, who do you need to be to be able to have the type of lifestyle and business that you want to have? 
because there will be development things in you that need to be taken care of before you can actually bust through, take it to the next level. All those phrases and words we're so used to hearing and so used to using that we've kind of started to ignore them. <laughs> But there's, I can assure you, there is so much truth to this. You can only grow so far just based on your credential. <laughs> uh, also, thank you. Finding a system that feels right, wouldn't that be easier to having to stick to it? Yes. But that the, my challenge with that, Ilsa, is that the systems all feel right in the moment because I like to start things and I like the sense that we've started something. What I need is a system that is easy, automated, habitual that allows me to complete and that my friend is my ongoing challenge and has been since I was a little girl apparently <laughs> behavioral consequences work really well for me however understanding that my business is not going to grow the way I want it to grow unless I get help in this area is the only way I'm going to be able to kick it and make it work for me to actually harness the thing and learn what it is. Because it won't just be around the systems that I have a problem, that behavior will be turning up elsewhere. And to me, I think it's got to do with a lack of discipline and there will be other parts of my business, <laughs> I know my spending is one of them, where there is not, I don't have the best disciplines in place. So as my business grows, I need to grow. As I grow, my business will grow. As your caseload grows, you need to grow. If you're used to only working with 10 clients and then you all of a sudden you want to see 14, you actually need to develop into that. If you want to move away from just seeing one-on-one -on -one clients and start running groups, you need to grow into that. There are things that we need to do and develop and help us along the way. So I would love to know, I'd love you to do a bit of self-analysis around where are some of these things, some of these habits, some of these behaviors that are hindering your business growth turning up for you? And is there a personal growth attribute that needs development here that will actually help you achieve your business success? Just putting it out there for a discussion. I am now going to go and work on the rest of my things that need attention today so that I don't feel so overwhelmed turning up to work tomorrow. <laughs> Until I come to you tomorrow afternoon, go be your awesome self.